Hello, welcome to LightWave 10 Introduction to Texturing. In this training video, we're going to cover all the basic aspects of creating great textures from model preparation to final render. We'll discuss some of the pitfalls of importing geometry from other software packages and get into such topics as preparing clean, orderly geometry, creating production friendly surface naming assignments, basic material construction using both original layer based surfacing system as well as the node based system refining materials to get the look we want including how to avoid creating invalid textures and a discussion about the pitfalls of creating glass, metal and other reflective materials. And finally some turntable lighting and rendering techniques to make your model and textures look great. Here we'll discuss creating a rendered image that is compositionally strong and makes good use of negative space. I can always add to that later. I think that's pretty good. I'll name that gun body and I'll hide those. Oh, there's some more polygons I can stick into the gun body. So let's let's uh, have a closer look at this model and see how that's working. I'll just close the surface editor so we can get a better look. Things seem to be lining up very well. Our image mode is currently RGB color. And very easy to drop down into 8 uh, bit space. Simply switch to grayscale. It'll say, ask if you want to discard the color information. The answer is yes. We definitely want to discard the color information. Now I'm going to save this under a different file name. Come on, spec gray. Again, as a target file. I'm going to load these two images up in layout and we're going to take a look at the, uh, the, the uh, difference. So this Komodo spec RGB is 48 megabytes. If I now load up the Komodo spec gray, we'll see that it's only 16 megabytes. Watch the reflection values here when I switch this to the uh, HDR image. See how much brighter the reflections are and how much more realistic it appears. Uh, first, I'm going to actually connect to the scaler to my diffuse channel. I'm actually just going to move this. Uh, personally, I prefer not to have uh, overlapping lines in my network if I can avoid it. So, in order to hook up this material, first of all, it comes in as a de default kind of uh, um, metallic red car paint. And I'll hook it up simply by connecting that. Now all those cables are going to go into this shiny uh, metallic red paint. And see if I can find a really good position. The tricky part with rims is finding just the right position to do what you want. And I think a key to positioning this light might be adding a little bit of color to it so that it's contrasting with the uh, over bright white key light. So let's maybe add a little bit of warmth to one side, maybe indicating that uh, the light source behind him is fire or something like that. Let's see if we can cool this light color down. So I'll go to my Kelvin color temperature and I'm going to pick uh, maybe 10,000 Kelvin uh, somewhere around there and see what that does for us. Okay, that's cooling it off a little bit. Might not be quite saturated enough. Okay, so we have a really bright, intense light now. I'll just let this resolve for a second. So we have this really nice, intense light coming in from one side that's a little bit too cool to be sunlight. Uh, and we have this nice, warm firelight rim coming in from the other side. We've got a nice bounce from below. We have a fill light coming in from the right side. I think this uh, image is ready for our uh, render.